Alright, what is up everyone? It's Sam from 64 Wheels, back with more diecast, and today we're going to be unboxing the latest wave of Hot Wheels Fast and the Furious line that contains not one, but two of the missing castings we needed to basically complete the whole original family from the first Fast and the Furious movie. Now, even though we got these castings, there are quite a few things wrong with them. They did some things right, a lot of things wrong, so we're going to be taking a look at each of those and the rest of the cars in the set. I'm really excited to open these because we waited 10 years for Vince's Maxima and we finally got it, so let's get into this. If you're like me, I've collected the Fast and Furious line for the last 10 years since Hot Wheels came out with it back in 2013. And these two, especially the Maxima, have been castings that people have been asking for for years and years instead of all these other like kind of side character NPC cars. We want the main character. We want the Maxima. And Hot Wheels finally gave it to us this year. And as a bonus, we also got Mia's Integra. Now, there are a bunch of things wrong with this car, and we will discuss that when we open it. So I just want to take a look at the whole set, and then we'll go ahead and dig in. So it's a five-car set, obviously, Hot Wheels car culture. The first one, the new for 2023 Custom Acura Integra Sedan GSR. This is a four-door, which I did not expect Hot Wheels to even make. I thought they would just slap that paint job on the two-door and call it a day, but nope, we did get the sedan. So on the back of the card there, if you want to see the uh, little barcode, there are all five cars. So it is the Integra. Boom. The 1999 Nissan Maxima. The one we've been waiting for in that beautiful blue color. Take a look at that in a second. The 3 of 5, the BMW M3 E46. This is the second time we've gotten this casting in the Fast and Furious line and the sac second time we've got it in the same paint job. So we'll take a look at that. Compared to the old one, same thing as the custom Mustang from Fast 9. Um, this was uh, John Cena's car. And I can't remember, Jacob, um, this is character name in the movie. Um, it was used in that big scene where they like jump through the jungle and stuff. And then finally we have five of five, the Alfa Romeo Giulia Sprint GTA, which I actually just did an unboxing of this casting in the Spedicolore, Spedicolaire, uh, Car Culture, the all-Italian one. This is an excellent casting. This is from the latest Fast X. This was Han's car. They've really stuck with the orange and black theme. There you can see it's a GR Supra. Um, we also haven't got the Veilside RX-7 from Tokyo Drift yet, which would be an, another one that we're kind of waiting for. Uh, but uh, an excellent casting. So I'll go ahead and open these in order since the first two are really the ones we want to see anyway. So the Custom Acura Integra. This, again, like I said, this is not one I expected to see Hot Wheels do correctly. And they really kind of did. They did a good job um, recreating the sedan version because, I mean, I really did just think they were going to slap the graphics on the two-door, the existing two-door model, and call it a day. But nope, we got it. So... If you're a fan of the movie like I am, which is probably why you're watching this unboxing, um, you'll notice that this car is not even, it's not really close to the correct color. It is lavender. I don't know if that comes across on screen, um, but like here is the blue color here. This will be a good example. Here is the blue color of the R34. You can clearly tell this is more of a purplish color. It's not even like a light blue. In the movie, the car was a, a very vivid light blue, almost like the color of the Porsche. Uh, the basic Porsche line. Um, so they got the color wrong, which to me is a such a glaring error. I don't know how you could make it. Um, but that's really the first problem with it. Second, as you'll notice that they did the graphic. The graphic looks pretty good. It's not bad. But they missed the uh, like lime green or lime yellow line that goes to the front. And they did put it on the other cars that had that. So there is it. It is on the Maxima. I believe the Supra has it. I don't even have it out. Um, but it's kind of a big part of the design of each of the team cars. And it adds a little bit of color to this casting. And it is missing. So I'm not sure why they left it out. I'm sure it's per, for price. But if you look at it right there, the eye of the like little, I don't know, gargoyle or guardian guy right there is the same color. So I don't know why. It's missing. I don't know if I got a weird casting and it was on there, but it does not seem to be there in general, and it does not seem to be on the card art. So I don't think it's an error. It's just not there. So um, they do have the correct 11 on the side that was in the movie. Um, there were a few uh, like branded stickers or decals at the bottom. Those are missing, but on the back, they do have the correct larger Integra Type R. 
Sicker and the HKS. So um, between the tail lights, I don't know exactly what that is. It looks like the trunk line or like the hatch line, but I'm not exactly sure why there's an indent like that. But the tail lights don't look bad. The the like the detail on them is pretty good. Um, you will see like the paint is very thick on this. Like on the edges, it almost hides the whole body line right there. Um, by the trunk you can kind of see a little of it not dripping down but it's just very thick on this car which brings us to another issue of the um b pillars and is that or the a pillar and the b pillar or c pillar are too thick um if you look at this car in real life this pillar right here is so skinny and i don't know if it comes off like look at it how thin it is in the drawing and then look at it right there and i know that is a difficult thing to do because this is a toy and there's some structural integrity built into these posts but when you look at other cars like this bmw they were able to make a very skinny post compared to this super thick uh accurate post like i i don't know why there's they're having a hard time with that kind of stuff um but it does seem to be a bit tall Overall, I don't know. The front looks good too. Uh, the uh, the tampos aren't super great, and mine has a little bit of uh, scratching around the window, which is odd. Did they put the little because they put the plastic thing in there to protect it, and it still kind of came off as a little bit scratched. But it does have mirrors, which is a thing we usually don't get from Hot Wheels. So that's awesome that this has mirrors. I believe. We're going to be seeing this more, um, not in the Fast and the Furious line, which is probably why they put some extra work into it, like the uh, like the mirrors. And it does not have the pillar right here. It is pillarless, so it's almost like a hardtop style. But if you look, the, the window has like a black tampo on it. I don't know if you can see that on the outline. And when you look at the real car, and I will put a screenshot of a lot of the things I've been talking about. I'll try to correlate them. Um, but on the real car, you can't see the door post. Like you can't see the post that goes in between the door. So that doesn't really bother me. That's actually pretty accurate, even though it's a huge chunk of plastic. Um, that part, I, d I don't actually mind. But them getting the color wrong, not including a very easy to do green stripe and then just some of the details oh the wheels i forgot the wheels so the wheels on the real movie car they were um 10 spoke but they were five um two spoke so it was like two sp i'll put a i'll put a screenshot here so you know what i'm talking about um but you can clearly see that they are much different than this car this car has chrome six spoke wheels where the other one was i guess i would call it chrome or a very bright silver polished silver 10 spoke wheels so they didn't nail the wheels either but hot wheels does really have a history of making these cars in the fast and furious line especially um making them and then the first time them not being as correct and then them kind of going through the different phases and adding um different items to them to make them better most times in the future like this was a good example um, I think they did an awesome job on this from the main line. They added the beadlock wheels that look a little better. They did extra detailing. Like this is this off-road charger looks great. Really good um, step up from the basic there. But this one, since we got it in premium first, there are quite a few issues with it. So as I'm, you know, as much as I'm glad to have it, I wish they would have done it more correctly. Um, but that's kind of typical of what we've been seeing from Hot Wheels lately, unfortunately. But we we got to take what we get right now, I guess. So the next one, the Nissan Maxima. This, uh, you know, I've been waiting 10 years for this. This is the final one to do the original movie with all the lineup, especially if you're like recreating the scene with the lightning where they're doing all the parts and stuff. Um, but this is it. So you'll notice, like everyone else has, including Mattel themselves, that that is not the front of a Maxima. That is the front of the JDM Nissan Cifero, I believe is how you say it. It's the uh, JDM Maxima, which has a different front end and a different rear end. So I have no idea why they chose a completely wrong casting. Now, I I'm, I know why. It's money. They chose a wrong casting because it costs money. And I hate that. I hate that money is getting in the way of correctness and being accurate within the hobby and I know it's about money the you are in business to make money but when there's so many more die cast manufacturers on the market right now and they're doing such 
um, just incredible jobs of sculpting castings that are looking just uber realistic to have Hot Wheels make such a glaring error on such a, a well-weighted release is just fucking mind-boggling like I just don't know what they are thinking with this so I'm sure we're going to be seeing a version of this like the JDM like Cifero or Cifero um, sometime in the future but as a Fast and the Furious collector, this is so disappointing that they, I mean, just right off the bat, it's, it's the wrong car. So, uh, already major points off for that. So, let's let's go ahead and see what this looks like open. And I know I'm not the first to point that out, and I won't be the last, but it is, I mean, it's such a big deal. I don't, I just don't know why they couldn't make a, a correct Maxima. Hopefully someone else, like a Mini GT or... Or someone else will come and make their correct casting. But when you collect the Hot Wheels line, you want Hot Wheels to make their correct casting. Like, I don't, I just, I just don't know. So, um, here you can see that the, the body line itself looks very odd. It looks longer. It look, it just doesn't look like Vince's Maxa in the movie. So, the front doesn't look like it. It looks exactly like the JDM version. And I will overlay pictures of the car so you can see that it is not even close to the Maxima that we got here in the States that the movie car was. Graphic-wise, it looks decent. The They really have not been on their Tampo game lately. Like, you can see, like, the printing in it, but I do like the shark and, like, his, like, laser eyes coming out. And there you can see that they are capable and know that that lime green line is there, but it's missing from the Integra for some reason. So, um, that is actual correct to the movie, the Toyo Tires um, logo right there, but it is missing the two or three other ones that were there, um, which is also a bummer. So, um, just looking at the quality of the Tampos, the front is okay. It's not super great. Um, and then you can see on this side, the, the yellow line goes almost into the headlight, where over here, it doesn't even touch the headlight. So, they're still having some uh, trouble lining up the tampos as well um overall the car color is good i think it's it's probably very close to the actual color and i watched the craig lieberman video on the car it was his actual daily driver at the time and it was 1996 uh, viper gts blue so i think this is pretty close to that i i would say at least die cast wise so um another thing just like we talked about the roof line on the integra you'll notice here this roof line, like, look at this. I mean, look how weird that looks. The whole roof line looks odd. In the plastic, like, there's not a, a pillar here. They made it out of plastic. It's not colored. It just looks black. This window back here is one piece. Like, I, I don't know. The whole, the whole side profile of this car just looks awful. God awful. It really does. And then back here... Like, I feel like the back doesn't go down as far as it should because that car had like a, I think it was a still in body kit on it and it kind of went down a little lower. So to have like, to have it sit up super high, like it's, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't look good. And then when you go to the back, you can clearly tell that that is the c that is the JDM rear end. The Maxima, including the stock version not even the modified version from the movie, had a flat trunk because it did not have a row of lights or anything going through the trunk where the JDM version does. You can clearly see that they added those humps there, like the indentions, to make the JDM version because that's what this is. This is not a Maxima. This is not the US USD Maxima. Um, so huge points off for that. Even if you hold it back here, it doesn't look like a Maxima. It looks like, like, look how wide and, f like, flat it looks. It just looks, this is such a shitty casting. I hate to say that, but it is. It's not, like, even if it was sub supposed to be the Cifero, I don't even think it looks good. I don't even think they did a good job. The front end looks good on the uh, if you're looking for the JDM stuff, but the rest of the body is just so bad. And then you can see the Tampos. They're that, like, uh, pointillism style, like the dot matrix printer. They look terrible. They're not very good. And then another thing you'll notice is that this has a trunk spoiler, which the one in the movie does not. And you get that, you know, clip of it backing out of the driveway before it does the burnout, leaving the, the family cookout. It has a flat, like there is no spoiler on it. So wrong, 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 wrong. I mean, it, how many things can you up in one casting that so many people wanted you to get right is just mind-boggling so 
while we have the Maxima, I don't really think we have the Maxima. I hate to say that, but Hot Wheels really let everyone down with this one. So I hope in the future this gets corrected. I hope this is the, like, our generation's uh, Bugatti uh, Veyron. Like, I hope they retool this sometime soon and actually make it look good and make it the Maxima rather than the JDM version. So sitting back there, it's still, it, just the body line doesn't look good. It rolls good. So does the, I'm sure that, yeah, this rolls pretty well too. So it's cool that we have both these now, but in terms of correctness, they still have a ways to go on this one. This, they just need to start over, honestly. So you know, while we have it, it's, it is what it is now. So with the rest of them, we'll kind of breeze through these real quick because just in case you don't want to buy them or if you're looking for this one, if you missed it the first time, we'll take a look at it and see what the differences are. Um, this was a background car in Fast or what was it? Furious 7. Um, it was seen for like like literally three seconds or I don't even know if it was three seconds. So um, this casting came out a few years ago. Same release. So when we look at it, the original one here on the left, the new one on the right, um, my new one right there, obviously you can see the paint quality has kind of dropped a little bit. I think the tampo quality on the new one is not as good either. Um, it does still have the black around the window. Looks to be the same exact color wheels, same color uh, detailing on the side. I don't know which one do you think looks better. I think the new one actually looks better on the vent. Probably a little better on that one. Um, it does have all the same black, like I said, the outline around the window. The taillights are a bit different. So the old one has more of a cherry red, like a deep red, and this has like a more bright red. That's like an apple red to me. This is more like a dark cherry and apple red. So again, though, but when you look at the quality of them, they're both terrible. I mean, they're, they just look awful. The BMW logo is super pixelated. You can't even hardly read the M3. That one, you can see the stripes a little bit more, but this, I mean, it's just a glob of nothing. So both of these, in my opinion, unless you're like really into this casting or collecting the Fast and the Furious line to like completion, I would pass on this if you already have it. So it's not a must have for me. So let's go ahead and look at the Mustang. So this was in Fast 9. This is the car um, that they do that totally unbelievable scene in of like jumping. I think he gets picked up by like, well, I can't even remember what Cypher's character, like they, they pick him up in the plane or a drone or something. Like it was so ridiculous. I mean, the, these movies are getting so outrageous now, but what is that? It's like a piece of paint on this. I have no idea what that is. There's like just a big glob of white paint on it. Oh, Hot Wheels. Oh my goodness. Okay. So obviously here's the old one. They released this as well. So there is a bit of a color difference on mine, at least. The um, other one is more of a navy blue and this one has more purple in it, if you can tell. I don't know. It's really hard to come across, like colors come across because everyone's eye is different. The screens are different, but these are definitely two different colors. Um, this one, the new one has a much more purplish hue to it. I'll kind of hold it close to the camera so you can see it. And this one has more of just like the regular flat blue look to it. So they're there. They have the same stripes. Um, tampo wise, it looks like the actual headlights on the new one are better. Um, they have more of that circle detailing. I don't know which one do you think looks better. Let me know in the comments. Does that have a scratch on it? I don't know. It's just like, I was like, what? Um, stripes look good. Not bad. Uh, same wheel, same chassis. On the rear end, I think, oh, man, neither are good. I think the new one, the detailing looks better. It's a more light red, but this one, it looks, yeah, that one looks too much. It almost looks like you slap too much paint on it, even though it's a tampo. I think the new one looks a little better. I think the winner is somewhere in between. Like, I think this doesn't have enough in it. It almost looks pink. And this one is way too, like, there's way too much on that one. So somewhere in between those is the winner. So, again, if you're not collecting this casting in, in like, specifically or the line to completion, I would pass on this one as well. Just because it's not, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's the same. So, pass. All right, let's get this last one. This Alfa Romeo, this Julia. This is such a great casting. Um, I was talking to, I can't remember the commenter. Forgive me for um, forgetting that, but... We were talking about how he is collecting this entire, like, wants to collect this entire casting lineup because it's such a beautifully done casting. It is. It's so nice. 
it's very well done. So um, I did not do hardly any research on this car. I seen it briefly in Fast X, which was just uh, in a very interesting Fast and Furious movie, but they did decent detailing on the front. Um, it is that pixelated graphic style, but it has a lot of detail. That for Mayo logo is unrecognizable. It, you can't even see it. It's just a glob of sh So that is unfortunate. The rest of the car looks good though. Like the stripes look good. It does have the silver on the windows. That one's maybe not lined up the best. I guess that's how they are. Um, the black stripe down the side looks good. The taillights look decent. I actually don't mind those, but there is, I don't know if you can see that like extra sprinkling of like the, the printer stuff is kind of like above the taillight right there. So it's not the cleanest. Can you read it right there? Uh, no, you cannot. So really need to step up the game on the tampos but as a casting and a release this is not bad so if you're collecting this one uh I'd, I'd say it's worth picking up it's it looks good and it doesn't actually have like it's not like this where it has the fast and the furious graphics on it even though it is from the fast and the furious you could put this car just in your collection if somebody doesn't know it's from fast and the furious it, it doesn't shout like i'm from a failing movie franchise now or like a fleeting franchise because it's not failing it's still making like a trillion billion dollars so um i love the big steel wheels on that it's got the thick tires v looks very racy very very sharp looking car so well that was it that was the newest fast and the furious wave with the maxima cifero cifero um, and the Integra. So let me know what you think of this lineup and especially these two in the comments. Do you think this Integra, do you think this is a good release? Does this look blue to you? Because this looks purple to me. So let me know if this looks purple to you or blue in the comments. Also, if you think this casting looks okay or if you agree with my sentiments about the the wheels and the like the pillars being too thick because I think that's like a big point. And then let me know, of course, what you think of the Maxima the JDM Maxima here, after we waited a decade for it, and they give us this. Cool. Well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, I will link the description down in the description below of the links to all my other Fast and Furious unboxings because I've done a ton of different Fast and Furious unboxings of even the Spy Racers line, the basic lines, the premiums, the, what is it? The Transporter Diorama box or whatever they're called. So I will link those down in the comments and then uh, all my social media channels like my link tree is down there as well. So uh, don't forget to like and follow. All that stuff helps make more videos. So I really appreciate you watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.